on our own. Commitment. Thank God for that. Amen. 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 We start on commitment and thank God for commitment. Amen. Yes, indeed. Um, one thing we mentioned as far as the first part of the year in uh, 2019, we mentioned two things. First thing we mentioned is that one thing I do daily, uh, I forget what is in the past or the mark or the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And so um, that that should be your thinking every day. <clears throat> that should be your thinking every day is uh, one thing you do daily. One thing it says I do daily. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to grow spiritually, uh, if you're going to have sober mindedness or have self-control, or grow or mature or be made perfect as a believer. That's one thing you must do daily. And uh, you have to forget what is in the past. Amen. 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 And you have to press toward the mark. Thank you, sir. And you have to press towards the mark uh, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So you got to forget and press. I said you have to forget yes. and press. Yes. And uh, you know, you, you you pressing, you pressing towards that which is in you. Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing. Uh, many times people press towards that which is out of them and not in them. And so the results that they have every day is that which is in, I mean, that which is out of them, which is in the world. They have the world's results instead of the word results. Because you are to press, you are to press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God that's in Christ Jesus. Now, one, one thing we asked last Sunday when we concluded the message, um, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or there is freedom. Mm -hmm. The Lord is the spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or there is freedom. There is freedom. Thank God for that. Amen. And then Wednesday night during Bible study, we asked the question, in relation to you, where is the spirit, the Holy Spirit, in relation to you? And Everybody said, he's inside of me. And so if the spirit of God is on the inside of you, that means that freedom is on the inside of you. Oh, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And so you should be pressing towards freedom. Amen. Amen. I mean, when I'm talking about press, you should be pressing freedom. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, the saying is, uh, if you squeeze the orange, Orange juice is coming out. Right. And thank God for that. You don't want to squeeze an orange and something else come out. <laughs> uh, I remember, I think it was last year, Sister Barbara got some, some apples and I started eating the apple and then it just looked ooky. <laughs> remember that? I sent her a picture. She was working and it just looked ooky because it has some ooky stuff on the inside. Ooky stuff that don't supposed to be in an apple. <laughs> but how I many you know the apple been messed up since? <laughs> Just like the pig got messed up, the apple got messed up. And so there's a lot of stuff that's messed up. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the fall of man. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't the apple's fault. Here and there, it wasn't the apple's fault. Right. Not the pig's fault. No. <laughs> it's man's fault. Mm -hmm. And man calls... Uh, whole lot of things to not to function how God created them to function in the beginning. But uh, you, you got to put pressure on uh, uh, what's the mark, you got to put pressure on the mark of the prize of the high calling of God that's in Christ. You got to put pressure on that every day. You got to put pressure on that. As you put pressure on that, you know what happens is it squeezes out your pants. Glory! I don't shout about that. It squeezes out your pants. And uh, 
when, when, whenever you do that. So that's one thing to do daily uh, that's beneficial to you. Amen. It might, might not help Amen. anybody else, but it'll help you. Amen. And then another thing we mentioned as far as uh, to do in 2019, we mentioned this in the Bible study. Uh, and then we shared it on a Sunday morning. But seek, aim at, and strive after first of all. First of all. And then Brother, Brother Tony, he admonished us to do this first and then do the other scripture second. Do, which is Matthew 6.33. He said, do that first. Mm -hmm. And then you do what's in uh, Philippians 3.13 second. You do this first. Because this is first things first. And so, uh, one, uh, but, but seek, seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His kingdom. Mm -hmm. And his righteousness. Mm -hmm. His way of doing and being right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His way of doing. Mm -hmm. His way of being right. And how often should you do it? All the time. All the time. And you should seek it first. Mm -hmm. Seeking first does not necessarily, hear me, I'm going to say this, seeking first does not necessarily mean seeking it early in the morning. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because if you seek it first at night, you still seeking it first. 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 Before action. And so sometimes people get very uh, religious mm -hmm. and they try to tell you what you're supposed to do in the morning time. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you work a nighttime job and you yeah. have to sleep in the morning, well, I wouldn't want you to have to get up early in the morning yeah. to seek the Lord first, yeah. if you follow what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So people be very religious in how they say things and they don't know how to be, what, what, what it boils down to, they don't know how to be led by the Spirit of God. Right. Because the, the spirit of God on the inside of you, he will tell you when to seek ye first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Glory. He will tell you when to seek ye first uh, his kingdom mm -hmm. and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times people like what's on the other side of this verse and they don't like what's on the previous side mm -hmm. of this verse. They really love and ready to shout about, and then all these things taken together yep. will be given you besides. Yep. Right. They like that part. Mm -hmm. Amen. But it's a process. Yes. Yeah. yes, it is. There's a process and a promise. Mm -hmm. I said there's a process and there's a promise. Amen. Now, when you're talking about seeking, aim at, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing it being right, I mean, that sounds like obedience. Glory. It's not just what you seek without obedience. It's what you seek first with obedience. Amen. Y'all yeah. get that? Yes. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. some people know to do the right thing, and they do it. They know more scriptures probably than all of us in here together. But they're not obeying the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Glory. If you're seeking ye first. Mm -hmm. And so seeking ye first process and promise, the process is, yes, I seek his way, uh, his way of doing it, being right. That's what I obey. I seek to, to know what God wants me to do this day, but he can rule and reign in my life or reign and rule in my life today. Yeah. Yeah. Today. Today. And thank God for that. So y'all get that? Yeah. And so there needs to be a commitment, a commitment to uh, Matthew 6.33 and Philippians 3.13. There needs to be a commitment that you're doing that every day. It's not more things as far as commitment. But, um, uh, Today our scripture is uh, Psalms 37. Praise God for that scripture. Thank God for the word. Hey, Mike. Word is a lamp to you. Have you found it? Yes. Amen. Have you found it? Say glory. 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 And in Psalm 37, verse 5, it says, uh, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Now, a lot of people don't like that verse. <laughs> but they like the verse before. <laughs> but there is a process and a promise. Amen. A lot of times people like the promises and they'll shout about the promises. They'll shout about all the promises. 
that's in the word of God, but they don't want to shout about the process. But they don't want to go through the process. But there's a process as far as your spiritual growth as far as in the Lord. And so uh, verse 4 says, delight thyself in the Lord. That's not what it says. Delight thyself also. Also, 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 delight thyself also in the Lord. And that sounds good to do. That sounds real good to do. Because people like to have a real good time, don't they? <laughs> delight themselves. They like to delight themselves. Because you hear that all the time now. Take care of yourself. Do for you. Do for you. Take care of yourself. You got to be about me, 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 me. And uh, we heard over the years, people don't want to like They don't like it now. But it's talking about real joy. It's Jesus first, other second, yourself last. <laughs> Because when you look at that, people say, no, you got to put yourself first before people, others. Mm -hmm. People say, but Jesus did. Right. Yeah. Did he? Yep. He did. Yep. And people, people are good at, uh, you know, uh, being in agreement with things that's popular. That's true. That's true. I, see, I see even, you know, some of my members here and uh, some things that they like on the social media. And it's just something that's popular. But they don't know that that ain't the truth. It don't even line up with who Jesus is, what Jesus taught, what Jesus said. It doesn't even line up with it. And I'm like, well, they didn't get that from me. They got too many teachers. Yeah. And some of y'all in here today, you have too many teachers, too many masters. And the only thing a master want to do is control you, call on the shot, tell you what to do. Amen. Some, some, some masters are good at leading you away from Jesus. Yeah, that's true. Preach. That's right. Through their own doctrine. That's right. That's true. Through their own teaching. Mm -hmm. Because it's not Jesus. You know, there's been some people, uh, members of my church, who've been led astray, led away from family of faith church, and it wasn't the God. It wasn't the God that led them away. That's right. Amen. Glory. And even some, you know, and, 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 and those who were uh, influenced and leading them away, I feel sorry for them. Yeah. Wow. Because yep. they're going to reap that one day. Yeah. yeah. They really are. Yeah. They're going to reap that one day. Yeah. For leading them away from the church. From the word. Not, not just from the church, yeah. but from the word. Yeah. Away from Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Led them away from Jesus. Only a fool would lead somebody away from Jesus. Right. Amen. Amen. You don't want to lead somebody away from Jesus. Yeah. Trying to entertain them. Trying to delight them. Mm -hmm. Trying to pacify them. Because when you look at Jesus, Jesus wasn't about that life. Right. He wasn't about that life. There were those who got offended at his teaching. And then he looked at his apostles, his disciples, and said, y'all going to lead too. <laughs> <laughs> he gave all them opportunity to lead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what he did. Because he, he knew, he really knew that he had what they really needed. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He said that what we yes. what, what we talked Wednesday night, he said the words that I speak unto you, they spirit and they life. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So he knew what he what he had. What was coming from him is what they needed. Mm -hmm. yes. Now when you try to convince somebody else to lead away from Jesus, you really saying that what you, you really saying that what's here is not good enough for you. Mm -hmm. Come on. Preach. Amen. Preach. That's what you're really saying. It's not even good enough for you. Yeah. yeah. Be careful of uh, husbands or wives. When, when, when you become a sinner because of you married the wrong person. If you, if you got a sin to keep that person, you know, you don't need to stay married to that person. Glory! You got a sin. You got a sin to stay married to that person. That ain't no commitment. No. You become a sinner after marriage. Mm. That ain't God. And so delight thyself in the Lord. Delight, delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Hallelujah. He'll give you the desires of your heart. And then the next verse says, commit mm -hmm. thy way. There is a way which seems right to a whole lot of folks. Mm -hmm. Way which seems right to a whole lot of church folks, to a whole lot of preachers, mm -hmm. 
to a whole lot of church members is just seeming right. Right. But it leads straight to hell or destruction or death. That's where it leads to. Yes. yes. It's not even God. Nope. That's right. I mean, when I hear, when, when I hear um, uh, on, on yesterday, you got a group of people who go to church and they are, they are in about Pride Month. Hmm. <laughs> Pride Month. Pride Month. And, and the people, people debating and arguing about gay rights. You know, you know, under the Constitution, everybody has rights. Mm -hmm. But under the Bible, <laughs> under Jesus, <laughs> under Jesus, there's only one way. That's right. <clears throat> and so, you know, y'all heard me teach here before. People, people trying to make the Constitution right over the Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, you got to live by knowing, uh, uh, commit thy way unto the Lord. The Lord is always right. Yes. What does he say mm -hmm. about these things? <clears throat> the people in churches from pulpits to the pew are saying is the way. But what does he say? What is it that the Lord says? Right. To hell with the culture. Right. 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 Amen. Amen. The culture will lead you to hell. Amen. Yeah. It may be cultural expression, but it may not be eternal principles. Amen. Preach, preach. Cultural yeah. expression even got people in the Bible all messed up. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 in that book uh, by uh, Dr. Ed Coles, uh, all those people died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All those people died. Because they had out of gods, they was committing fornication. All of them died because there was a way in which they thought was right, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and it was leading straight to death, straight to destruction, straight to the pit of hell. Mm -hmm. That's right. And they was being led to hell from the pulpit. That's, right. mm -hmm. That's true. Well, well, well. That's why we got to stay rooted and grounded yes. yeah. in the Lord. Amen. That's true. Because I mentioned Wednesday night. What do you think about this guy who I mentioned last week who was responsible for a life of a person because he was drunk? And now he's in a jail cell. What do you think he think about drinking now? Because I say I'll never forget the crying of the wife. I'll never forget the crying of the uh, the children mm -hmm. from 16 to 23, four children. Mm -hmm. Never forget the crying. When I had to tell them about, you know, uh, tell this wife or husband is not coming home, he was killed in a fatal collision, accident, vehicle accident, and then the children listening to that. Mm -hmm. And to hear that crying, and then even when I leave that Monday night, around midnight, I'm still hearing their voices mm -hmm. because, because the, the Lord was telling me, he said, that's what grieving sounds like. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's what loss sounds like. Mm -hmm. And people want to say, well, God's in control. You know, it's just God's will. No, no, God ain't, God ain't, God, God, God does not go around hurting his no. children. Right, Amen. right. Amen. Preach it, preach it. It is the goodness of God that brings a person to repentance. Yes. Right. Sure. Glory. You know, the Bible says, uh, be not deceived, God is not marked. Whatsoever man so that shall he also reap. And so the, the reaping that a person receives, that's not God. Amen. It's what they sow <laughs> that brought, brought about them reaping a certain thing. Amen. And so that wasn't God. I said, that was not God. And, and you know the devil came only to steal, kill, and destroy. That's why the devil came. Right. Amen. Amen. Only, 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 mm -hmm. only. And so, 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 so now, this drunk driver, who's responsible for someone's death, we we don't know what he was told concerning drinking. Concerning alcohol. We don't know what he was told. Yeah. 
that, that, that pushed him to a place of drinking. Not just drinking, but getting drunk. Mm -hmm. Because this, this, this tragedy happened around 14 p.m. in the afternoon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that means he started drinking early. Early. Mm -hmm. And most times people don't understand that, that, that drinking and getting drunk will take you further. Wanna go. Wanna go. It'll take you far. I hear sometimes, <clears throat> and I'm like, I'm glad I didn't drink like that. <laughs> like I hear some stories about the Larrys in the, in the church. <laughs> <clears throat> I hear some stories about the Larrys. I hear some stories about the Tony uh, in the church. I hear some stories about uh, the Cheryl in the church. I hear some stories. And so, you know, one thing I do, I, I listen to to, to, to live, not to live like how they live. Yeah. Y'all hear what I say? Mm -hmm. Because every time I hear some story from them, it sober, keeps me sober. It keeps me sober. <laughs> it keeps me sober. Every time oh, I hear yeah. a story, it keeps me sober. Amen. Um, because it's just like, ooh, ooh, if the devil could have had his way, mm -hmm. they would not be sitting here on a pew today. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. If the devil could have had his way. I, I, I hear stories sometimes, you know, I reflect as far as like what I, I hear Paul talking about when he was in service. And all that drugging he did, that drugging should have just carried him out. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, but God is so good. How he redeemed these men. How he redeemed these women from the curse. Glory. Hallelujah. And now they have committed their way unto the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And they, they can't go back now. Hallelujah. They can't go back now. Now think about it. If they go back now, it'll be seven times worse than what it was. That's Good. right. Now for any of them, I don't want it to be seven times worse than what it was. Yeah. yeah. Well, wouldn't that be death? Yeah. 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 So every day I'll be thanking the Lord oh, yes. for keeping them. Yes. Because when you look at what alcoholics go through, you know, that could be them. Could have been. Mm -hmm. Could have been. Mm -hmm. i never forget, I worked the case one time, and uh, this man, he was sitting up in his recliner chair dead mm -hmm. in another room. His wife, you know, I told y'all about his wife, came to jump up in the living room, came to me, put a hand on my face. And said, God sent you here. You you got the light of God on your on your face. You shining. You shining. You shining. And I was like, oh, you know, I always. You know, I'm thinking about it. I always shine. I want the glory of God to shine. Amen. I want people to see that it's no longer I that live. Glory. And so I always told y'all, whatever I, you know, uh, when I'm going to a car, I know I'm dealing with death, and so I always listen to some praise music. I be praised stuck. I be praised. Yes. Praise God. I'm going to deal with death, but even in the midst of death, I'm praised up. Yes. And then when I leave from ministering yes. to a family or people, I, when I get back in my vehicle, I crank up some more praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That I stay praised up. Amen. I'm going to stay praised up. Because I know as the praises of God go up, the blessings come down. And I'm going to stir up praise because I know it's celebrate. I'm going to always celebrate who he is, what he did, what he's doing, and what he's going to do. I'm going to celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he knows how to bring life in their situations. Yes. Glory. Amen. Glory. Glory. So, hear me now how I say this. I don't show up for the dead. Uh, amen. 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 Yes. Glory. I can't help the dead. That's right. Unless God tell me to lay hands on and grieve on them or something and they come back to life and tell me to do something yeah. like that. Yeah. But I can't help the dead. Yes. But I'm there for living. Living. Glory. That's who we there for. Yep. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And I'm not representing the dead. I'm representing the living. living. And so I'm not seeking the dead amongst the living. I'm seeking the living. Hallelujah. 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 Ain't God good? Yes. yes. And so, and so, you know, commit thy way unto the Lord. There is a way that is right. Amen. Jesus 
says, I am the way. Mm -hmm. I am the way. That means there's no other way. <laughs> there's no other way. He is the way. He's the truth. He's the life. And there's no other way to get to the Father except by, but by him. Mm -hmm. yeah. But by him. Thank God for him. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, so Jesus. Commit our way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. That's a commitment. This is commitment. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. Trust also in him. him. And he shall bring it to Paris. Oh, thank God. Thank God. ERV says depend on the Lord. Yeah. It does not say commit. It says depend. Amen. Who's your dependency on Amen. today? Amen. Glory. Who are you dependent on Amen. today? Amen. You can tell those who are dependent on the Lord. Because you know, you're talking about your dependency. Glory. You know. Amen. You can tell who you're dependent on. Yes. Depend on the Lord. Trust in him and he will help you. There's no way, hear me now, y'all should shout about this. There's no way for you to depend on the Lord and he not come through to help you. Amen. 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 If he's not helping you, you're not dependent on him. Amen. Glory. If he's not helping you to be more Christ-like, let's just, 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 just put it right there. Mm -hmm. If he's not helping you to be more Christ-like, mm -hmm. yes. you're not dependent on him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Depend on the Lord. Trust in him. Yeah. You know, we've always been quoting uh, from Vacation Bible School, Sunday School, uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not to thy own understanding, and all thy ways of knowledge, uh -huh, and uh, he shall. Uh -huh. <laughs> we quoted it, but we didn't know how to live it. Mm -hmm. That's true. We knew how to quote it. We heard it. We heard it screamed at us. Hooped at us. Yeah. <laughs> we had to memorize it. Mm -hmm. But we did it all without really trusting in him and allowing him to direct mm -hmm. our path. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because we was not acknowledging him when we left church. Ooh, mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's true. We just acknowledged him when we were at, at church. church. That's you know, right. We that Wednesday night service. And that's one thing we talked about as far as once we got saved. And we weren't taught how to live this. Right. We just were taught how to receive this, mm -hmm. but not how to live it. Yes. How many of y'all glad that y'all are growing up and living it over the years? Wow. Glory! Years. Yeah. You acknowledge him, not just while you at church. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, but you acknowledge him Amen. when you're away from church, yeah. when you're on your job, yes, Lord. Yes. when you're at school. Amen. Me and Sister Barbara had to acknowledge him on the beach of Hollywood, Florida. <laughs> I told her, some of the guys said, well, how was your trip? I said, I saw a whole lot of booty. <laughs> I mean, I'm not supposed to say that, but it's true. You can't help but to see it. You're on the beach, it's hot outside. All these women, and men too. <laughs> running to the, going to the beach. Because Bob said one time, Ah, look at them women. They got G-strings on. Didn't you say that one time? Yeah. <laughs> and so she said, look at them. So what did I do? Look. <laughs> <laughs> she told me to look. She told me to look. <laughs> so what I do? <laughs> I knowledge the Lord <laughs> in all my ways. <laughs> While I look, I, I nod the way, I nod the Lord while I look. Amen. And I was thanking God for my wife. <laughs> Glory! Amen. Glory! Amen. <laughs> Glory. Thank God for that. But don't ever go through the, don't, don't ever go to the beach and think you're not gonna see a whole lot of <laughs> You know anything about that, sir? In California. Oh, now you got the, they have the, 
And like Bishop last Sunday, we asked him a question. That's love. And he said, uh huh, something like that. You remember that? He said, uh huh, you remember that? He said, uh huh, you remember that? Uh huh. So he's like, what's that mean? <laughs> I'm guilty. I'm guilty. <laughs> but we just right now, we, we, we just tell you to forget about the past. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And on. stay focused <laughs> on the woman that set it beside you. <laughs> and we can't even say that, Lord. Thank you for that, but we can't even say that. <laughs> can't even say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, though. That's a good one, though. I think you have a sense of humor. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, um, but acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get in, when you get in situational circumstances or places, or even around people, um, you're gonna really find out if you are acknowledging him or not. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. That's right. Yeah. You're gonna find out. You're going to really find out if you are dependent on him or not. Mm -hmm. You're going to really find out. You're going to really find out. Mm -hmm. If you're really trusting him, if you're really growing up, if you're acknowledging him, and then in those type of moments, he's directing. Because he's not going to lead you to unrighteousness. Amen. He's always going to lead you to righteousness. righteousness. That's right. He's Hallelujah. going to lead you to his way of doing. Mm -hmm. And his way of being right. That's what he, that, that's the way he's always going to lead you Amen. and me. How I many of y'all thankful for that? Glory. Yeah. Glory. That, that, that when you trust in him, he'll never forsake you. That's right. When you're acknowledging him, he'll never forsake you and lead you down a path of unrighteousness. It's always a path of Righteousness. Hallelujah. Jesus. They had enough sense when he was going to curse the children of Israel when God opened up the mouth of the donkey and told him, You need to get off that road. Yes. He had enough sense to get off of it because he was going down a road that was going to lead to death because there was a death angel down that road. He was traveling. And, and God is no respecter of persons. That's right. That's right. Somebody ought to shout about that. Glory. Yeah. And if he did it, and we know he did it for Balaam. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you know he will direct your. Amen. That's right. And deliver you, if you allow yes. him to, from the angel of death. Yes. Amen. Amen. He'll deliver you. Yes, he will. Never forsakes. Amen. From the enemy coming to steal, kill, and destroy you. Glory. Is God that good? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I was just thinking. I was just thinking a couple of days ago. I thought I was going to teach on it today, but I'm not teaching on it. But it's just a part of my, you know, my, my message, my testimony. You know, uh, Hezekiah was sick unto death. Mm -hmm. And because the prophet came and said, Hezekiah, the sickness you have is unto death. You're going to die. Set your house in order. And so when, when the prophet left, um, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed. Mm -hmm. That's what he did. <clears throat> Before the prophet got to where he was going, he said, go back and you tell Hezekiah, I'm going to add 15 more years to his life. Amen. 15 more years. Wow. And so I got to thinking, my testimony started June the 1st, 15 years. When I was at St. Thomas Hospital mm -hmm. for, for, for seven days on the sixth floor, sixth floor of B. Doctor standing on my bed saying, I don't know what else to do for you. Yeah. Fever 104.8, body oil and shutting down. And y'all know the rest of the story. Yes, it's been 15, 15 years. Glory. 15 Glory. years. Glory. I give God praise every year. Glory. I give God praise Glory. every year. Hallelujah. I give God praise in Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. And so, you know, I do know that there's nothing too hard for God. That's right. Because it's out of a mouth of a doctor, and a doctor said, I don't know what else to do for you, and your body will be shut down, and I don't know what else to do for you. No one but Jesus. 
Well, doctor, I thank you for your help, but I'm not depending on you. That's Amen. Right. Oh, that's right. That's right. You know, before there was a you, there was a him yeah. who died on the cross. Yeah. Yeah. And he bore all of my sicknesses. He bore all of my sins. He bore all of my diseases. Where on a hill? Oh, he did it for me. He did it for me. Yeah. <laughs> Because he looked beyond my sickness and he survived. He saw my need. He survived. He survived. He survived. And let me ask a question. Has he changed today? No. Is he still the same today that he was yesterday? Will he be the same tomorrow? Yes. So can you praise him today? Contemporary English version says, Brother Mark, yes, let the Lord lead you mm -hmm. and trust him to help. Mm -hmm. Now, now, if that's the case, you're in a win-win situation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You can't lose. Amen. Sure. Let the Lord lead you. You ain't leading yourself. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all. <laughs> oh, y'all didn't even hear that. Let the Lord lead Amen. you. Hallelujah. Too many folks in churches want to be leaders yep. without being led. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. I said too many churches, too many people in churches in pulpits, they want to be leaders without being led. Glory. But let the Lord lead you. you. Yeah. And trust him to help. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Anybody committed to trusting him to help you today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does he always show up to help you? The Bible says, in a time of trouble, he what? He what? In a time of trouble, he what? He's a very present help. He's a very present help. He's a very present help in a time of what? Trouble. Every time. He's there. Do y'all shout? He's there to lead you out of the trouble that you're in. Hallelujah. He knows how to lead you out of all the trouble that you're in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He knows how to lead you out. Yes. He knows how to lead you out. Thank you, Jesus. Did he lead? Did he lead uh, Daniel out of the trouble that he was in? Yes. Did he lead Shadrach, Meshach? And Abednego out of the trouble that they yeah. were in? Yeah. yeah. Did he lead Jesus out of the very pit of hell? Yeah. Hell is a trouble place. Hell is a trouble place. You in trouble yeah. if you go to hell. Yeah. But what did God do? <laughs> he led his son out of hell. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, if he can lead, now if we know he led his son out of hell, what kind of hell can you go through on earth that he cannot deliver you from? Glory. Glory. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. But you know, a lot of times though, church folks, their commitment. It's sometimes shaky. Mm -hmm. And you need to get delivered from unstable or shaky commitment. Amen. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? What, what do I mean by that? Uh, if, if you was going to a swimming pool, swimming pool this summer, swimming pool this summer, mm -hmm. this summer, and uh, you, you're one of them persons who, you know, you, you don't want to commit to the water, so you just go to the swimming pool. <laughs> and you just put your foot with your toes. You just put your toes in the water. And you say, 
said, Who they want to call? And then you take your foot out. You put your left foot in. You take your left foot out. You put your left foot in. And you shake it. What are you talking about? That water's cold. And so, but then somebody tell you one of your friends or your family members say, Oh, you just gotta, you just gotta just, you know, just go a little further every time. And so you put your foot in again, and then now you go up to your ankle. And then you say, oh, it's still cold. And then, and then, then, then you say, but then you jump back out again. So you put your, your left foot in with your ankle. You take your left foot out with your ankle. You put your left foot in with your ankle, and then you take it out again, and you shake it all about. Yeah. <laughs> ah! Ah! And you keep doing that, and, and then and then somebody said, "Oh man, come on now, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! You need to get in the pool." You said, "Well, I I I, I put my foot in the water, mm -hmm. and did the person put their foot in the water? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they put their foot in the water, and they keep doing it, and then they go a little further. Now they get to where they need be." They knee deep. And just because they got in the water and they just knee deep, did they make a commitment to the water? No. Mm -mm. Nope. They did. Nope. But isn't part of them in the water? Yeah. But now, let's just flip this a little bit. This thing now, you at the swimming pool, you step out on the diving board. And you jump from the diving board. When did you commit to the water? When you got in the water, or when after you jump? Before you jump. <laughs> See, this is how people from a right spectrum want to be committed to God. Some people just show up to the pool. <laughs> And they just put a foot in. And they said, I'm committed to God. To his way of being and doing and being right. I'm committed. I'm committed. I'm committed to who he is and what he did. For. I'm committed. Are they really committed? Because they show up at church. Are they really committed? Because they show up at church. Many, many times they want to play the, somebody mentioned the hokey pokey. <laughs> when you put your foot in and you take it out. And you put it in and you take it out. <laughs> you put it in and you take it out. You put it in and you take it out. You're just in and out, being tossed to and fro. All right, all right. You're tossed to and fro. Because right. yep. you don't want to be fully committed to your faith. Yeah. To his way of being and doing, which is right. Yes. Amen. But then you have those who say, I don't know how the water's gonna feel. I don't even know what's all in the water. But without faith, I know it's impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. That's right. I know I got to get in this water by faith and not by sight. I got to get in this water not by how I feel. Right. That's true. I just got to get in here because my faith says that's the place I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be being filled with the very spirit of God I got to get all that in me, get all that around me now. See, the problem with most people who go to church, they're not committed to be being filled with the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They just take a little drink and that's it. That's it. Yep. That's it. They take a little drink and that's it. So you got to know there is a difference between walking in the swimming pool versus jumping in the pool from the diving board. That's a big difference. That's a, I said that's a big difference yeah. between walking 
in the swimming pool. Don't that look cute? And diving. Yeah. See, we have to commit before we know everything that is going to happen. Amen. Because he knows. Yes. Now, I understand what, what the, you know, people say, well, con consider the cost of a matter before you, well, he, he, he told you to jump into your faith. Did not tell Abel to go to a, leave, leave, leave your people? Mm -hmm. Abel didn't know where he was going, but just the Lord said, go, and what did he do? He went. He went. He obeyed. Mm -hmm. He obeyed. You know, I was thinking this morning, I, I remember we went through training as far as Citizen Police Academy, and we went to the uh, Emergency Communication Center. And in part of their speech to us, they said they know different seasons of the year when certain things are gonna happen. And one thing they did say, certain times during the summer, you can expect when, they, when they're working, the dispatcher's gonna get calls that saying there was a drowning at a river or a lake. They say it never fails, and it is a certain time that they know those calls are coming in. Yeah. They're coming in. Because regardless of all the warnings that's out there, people still choose to be led by the spirit of death instead of the spirit of life. Yeah. Right. Because, and, and, and then I'm thinking, if at a emergency communication center, if they can know to warn, how much more should we who have the Spirit of God Amen. ought to be able to warn? Yes. Are y'all here today? Yes. Because they just know they get so many, it's just, just certain phone calls. They get these phone calls and people are going to drown. And then certain holidays, they know it's going to be a shooting. They know what time the call's coming in. They got it down to a science. They said certain holidays, we know at this time when these family members get together and they start drinking and arguing. Because arguing and fussing and raising hell goes with drinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And they know we're getting some domestic calls. They know we're getting some calls on holiday where there is a shooting. Mm -hmm. They already know it. And so if they know it, should we not be warning our people? Right. Should not we be warning our loved ones? Mm -hmm. should, do, should we not have the spirit of God on the inside of us mm -hmm. to be able to warn others mm -hmm. of the dangers that's before them? Mm -hmm. yes. With all the different signs and the warning signs that's, 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 that's close to the water and people steal don't pay attention to him. Mm -hmm. And so you mean to tell me well, it was just God's will for that person to go? No. Mm -hmm. It wasn't God's will mm -hmm. for that person to go. That person just avoided all the warnings, the danger signs. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and so what is it that the emergency communication centers know? They know people are not going to follow rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many people have you seen this year speed up and down the interstate knowing the speed limit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's, it's a speed that could lead to death. Mm -hmm. Right. How many people do you know who speed today? Even though there's been many warnings. They even warn you on the interstate now. Deaths this year, uh, fatalities this year on the interstate compared to last year at this same time. And that doesn't slow people down. Because mm -hmm. people do not want to yield or commit themselves to the way that is right. Yep. To the way in which the Lord can help them. Y'all get that? Yeah. Because we it, it never fails what we see as far as as chaplains. The uh the the, the person who's drunk, who hit somebody, 
and the, that other person dies, usually the, the, the drunk, the alcoholic does not have <laughs> any scratches, scratches yeah. on them. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. And if it is, it's just a few, you know, bruises or what have you, but that's all. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all. So you know that's the devil. Yep. That's the devil. But thank God that's not the end of the story. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, y'all like this too. Some church members commit themselves to this right here only. That's not my job. <laughs> you know anybody who have, have a commitment to that's not my job? Yes. <laughs> that's not my job job. Mm -hmm. You never would have thought that it was God's job to die. Right. Since, since he is innocent, living, perfect, set up from everlasting to everlasting, you never would have thought that it was his job to die because he never had sinned. That's right. So sometimes God will give you an assignment that you, you know, you have to understand no, well hey, that's not my job. Mm -hmm. It says this is a story about four people named everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. Do we have any of those in the church today? Mm. There was an important job to be done. Important job to be done. Not just any kind of job, but an important job to be done. And everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about that because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody would not do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have. That's right. Well, we don't never want that kind of commitment here at Family of Faith Church. Amen. That's, that that is the wrong attitude, Amen. wrong attitude Amen. to have at a church to bring to a church. Wrong attitude Amen. to have at a church. Some church members are committed to this is my job. Right attitude. Y'all get that? That's the right attitude. Some church members are committed to fight, to fight a good fight. I like it. I like it when, when, when my church members have the right attitude. And they know it's their job to fight a good fight. You know, talk is cheap. We're going to find out about all your talking when you get in the ring, mm -hmm. you might get knocked out being heavyweight champion. <laughs> what happened to somebody last night? But you might get knocked out. You know, talk is cheap. Yes. You know, some people try to talk on the same level as Martin, I mean, uh, Muhammad Ali back in the day. Uh, mm -hmm. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. You know, they, 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 they had good talk. But then when you got in the ring, <laughs> And so, you know, you, you, you got to, I, I, I just, I, like I said, I just love it. I just love it. Do anybody love it? Anybody love it? When, 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 when a person is committed to fight a good fight. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They committed to fight a good fight. Amen. A faith. A good fight. A good fight. They show up to fight. They get in the ring. And you know before they even get in the ring, it's going to be a good fight. And then they end the ring, you say, oh, that's a good fight. <laughs> they ain't bagging down. Mm -hmm. They not bagging down. That's right. They not losing hard. Mm -hmm. They not fainting. They not caving in. They not quitting. They fighting a good fight. But you know something? You never know if you can win if you never fight. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
You never know if you have winning in you if you never fight. Right. Right. You never fight. That's right. Fifteen years ago, I was in a fight. Mm -hmm. Amen. Ha! I wasn't giving up. I, I, I mean, I, I, I knew how to fight. Mm -hmm. I had Brother Paul and Brother Tony uh, bring me some healing scriptures, healing uh, teaching. Had it on 24 7 in my hospital room. I knew how to fight. Doctors come in there, nurses come in there, family come in there, and what they hearing every time they came in there. Word. 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 I knew how to fight. That's right. I was fighting to win, mm -hmm. not fighting to lose. Right. Amen. I was committed to fight the good fight to win. Glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. Even when I was in the hospital, uh, back then, you know, I used to do it when we was on the radio. I did the radio broadcast live. I did it live from my hospital room mm -hmm. on the telephone. Did it live. Did it live. And a doctor came to the room wanting to get in that morning, and Barbara had the door blocked. The doctor had to come back. He don't interrupt no man when he's doing the live radio broadcast. <laughs> That's money. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Well, y'all just hold on. My doctors want to come in the room. Yeah. You can wait. You're going to make your money regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But if somebody need to hear this word this morning, That's right. Right. from a hospital room, hospital bed. Mm -hmm. So what was I doing? Fighting? The fight of faith. I was fighting a good fight. But then the thing is, once you have experience with knowing how to win, mm -hmm. <laughs> you keep doing what you know to do to win right. every time. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. A few of y'all shouted on that. Glory. But once you know what to do to win, once you have experience knowing how to win every good fight, you know what to do every time now to keep on winning. Glory! And not only that you win, but you get to a place where you have others to win. Amen. Yes. Yes. God, God, God don't want you to be the only one that's winning. Amen. He doesn't want you to be the only one that's winning. He wants those around you. That's right. To win too. That's right. And so. If you're going to win, if you're going to win and be around me, you got to fight a good fight. Glory. And the weapons of our warfare are not, but they mighty through God. Mighty through God. Mighty through God. Mighty through God. Hallelujah. So, right at you. This is my job. I'm committed to the good fight. What else am I committed to? To finish the race. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happened to someone so and They just went home and sit down. What? Your commitment now is just going home, sitting down. I mean, nothing wrong with you, except from upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Because if you're at home and you're not finishing the race, it's wrong attitude. <laughs> but Paul, Paul was committed to finish the race. Mm -hmm. Yes. If there's a finish, that means that was a starting place. Yeah. Right. That's what that means. Mm -hmm. And so now it, it becomes our lot as a church as far as adult ministry, youth ministry, children's ministry, to help those who have started the race to finish. Amen. 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 We're here to help them to finish. Amen. Amen. Finish strong. Yes. We're here to help you to finish strong. Yes. Um, I was at Cane Ridge. Um, they have basketball trials, boys basketball trials now. And uh, <clears throat> I was over there Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, it's a difference between 
the upperclassmen, the 10th, 11th, 12th grade, as opposed to the freshmen, the ninth graders. Ninth graders, they, they look like they need oxygen <laughs> during the practice. And then one guy I knew, one, one player, he's a freshman, I knew, I, I, I know his family, and he said, and I said, well, how is it? He said, it's, it's, it's a faster pace. Do a whole lot more running. And he was sitting over there. <laughs> but, the, but the upperclassmen, while they was doing all this running, because they have to run, and, they, and it had to be at a certain time. Coach keeping time. If, if they had three groups, if every group don't make the time, every group don't make the time, that means every group have to do all that running again. So if I know I'm going to have to run again because you're not finishing strong, you're not finishing within the time, you think I'm not going to encourage you? That's right. I'm going to encourage you. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm going to help you to get stronger. Mm -hmm. I'm going to help you to finish within the time. That's right. Yeah. Because it's not, it's, it's just not important to you. Right. It's also is important. Because I don't want to run again. Amen. <laughs> I do not want to run again. Come on, come on. But what is the coach teaching? He's teaching them we're one. Mm -hmm. We're a team. Right. All of us must be in shape. Because you don't never know when it's going to be your time that you may have to be in the game. And then when they run from one side to another, they saying a number every time they know what number to call out. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the coach said, when you are getting tired, you get confused. Yeah. That's right. So he said, that's why you got to count. He said, that's why y'all have to count. You have to count. You have to keep counting. Because if you get tired in the game, you're going to get confused. And then you know what will happen? You'll be calling time out when you don't have any. Y'all yeah. know who did that? <laughs> you'll, be calling, you'll be calling time out when you do not have any time outs. Because once you get weak, you'll get confused. Yeah, that's true. Now, who's the author behind us getting confused? The devil. He's the author of confusion. Yep, he sure is. He wants you to be confused. And that's why, that's why it's the adult ministry, the youth ministry, the children's ministry, the praise team, the urchins, the preacher, pastor. It, it, it is our lot to help you to do everything on this race decently and in order. Amen. And finish strong. Amen. Because it's our desire that you finish the race. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we encourage you because if you don't, if you if you lagging behind, that that, that affects us. Right. Yeah. Amen. It does. You, 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 you know that, that affects us. Yes. It affects you, but it affects us too. Yes. Amen. And then, and then number three, number three, what, what are you committed to? Right attitude. Right attitude. Some church members are committed to right attitude. That's my job. Serve the Lord faithfully. Yes. Serve the Lord faithfully. You must be committed to serve the Lord faithfully. Not every now and then. Right. Not when you want to. You know, what was it, Frank Sinatra? I did it. God's in God's kingdom, you 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 don't get to do it. Your way. And so, what's our job as adult ministry, youth ministry, children's ministry, to help you get stripped of doing it your way. way. Mm -hmm. And to do it his way. way. Amen. Right. Glory. Amen. And you know. It's just like when y'all was in, in service, boot camp, people, they just wanted to fight. They, they just thought that, 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 that whoever was you know, in charge, that commanding officer, just the worst person on earth. If you wanted to buck up to them, I don't mind you bucking up to me. Y'all mm -hmm. follow my yeah. we, we don't mind you doing that because we know there's some things you got to get stripped of. Everybody don't like that commanding officer. They didn't like that commanding officer. But now I guarantee you there's some men and women reflect back in life and say, whoa, I really appreciate now. Now. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. 
That was a time we didn't appreciate what Jesus did on the cross for us. Right. To live it. Right. But we appreciate it more now yeah. than we did five years ago, 10 years ago, yeah. 20 yeah. years ago, yeah. 25, 30, mm -hmm. 40 years ago. We appreciate it now, but we didn't then. But even though we knew that he died on the cross for us, mm -hmm. but we was not appreciating it. Yeah. Right. And so we know as far as, you know, you being stripped of some things, you don't appreciate it all. Yeah. How it's being taught. You're not supposed to. Because this is new to you. Mm -hmm. Right. Boot camp was new to men and women. It was new. But it had, they had to have a, a new way of thinking. A military way of thinking. We got to have a Christ-like way of thinking. A Christ-like way of living. A Christ-like way of talking. Confessing. There is a Christ-like way. And so that means that I got to be stripped from some things. I got to lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset me and run this race with patience, looking unto Jesus, Amen. who is the author and the finisher of my faith. Hallelujah. And so what I do, I, I serve the Lord faithfully. Yes. I'm faithful unto death. Faithful. Because how faithful was he to you and me? So be thou faithful. Be thou faithful. And then the scripture says, Jesus thought, if you be faithful over a few things. Mm -hmm. Just a few, Jesus said. He said, if you be faithful over a few. Is that what he said? Yeah. yeah. Just a few things, not a whole lot of stuff. You know? And so you thinking, you thinking you being faithful over a whole lot. But Jesus only called it a few things. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Preach, preacher. Because yeah. yeah. your thinking is wrong. Yeah. He said, well, you be faithful over a few things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on up. And I'll make you ruler. Over a whole lot more than that which you were faithful when you was on earth. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all thought I should have shot it right there. Hallelujah. Yeah. Good place to shout. He said, I'll make you ruler over many things. Why? Because you were faithful over a few things while you was on earth. Now I'm going to make you ruler over much more. Yeah. Glory. Hallelujah. So, 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 so why, why do I complain and murmur and, and, and grumble about the few things God has me doing for the upbuilding of his kingdom? When I know this is a setup for even more. Amen. When I know it's a setup. Come on, man. It's a setup. Yeah. It's a setup. <laughs> you know why it's a setup? Because God will never be outdone. Amen. And he's always going to give you more. Because what's that, what's that song say? You can't beat God's giving. That's right. You can't beat his faithfulness no matter how hard you try. The yeah. more you are faithful, the more he'll be faithful to you. Yeah. So just keep on being faithful. <clears throat> because Amen. it's really true. Amen. <laughs> it's really true. Yeah. <clears throat> and the more you faithful to him, the more he will be faithful to you. To you. Can somebody shout about that. Hallelujah. 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 Now, now, <clears throat> we'll close on this. There's ten ways. So I got ten, ten, for, ten minutes for each one of them. <laughs> There's ten ways to support your church. And you got to say, well, I'm committed. I'm not committed. I'm committed. I'm not committed. I'm committed. I'm not committed. I need to repent. Turn from not being committed and be, become committed. But I'm committed. So I'm committed. Number one. Ten ways to support your church. I'm committed. Attend regularly. If you're not working, kids not doing anything on Wednesday night, you ought to be here. Amen. Kids not, you know, you're not working. You're not working on Sunday, y'all be here. Amen. Pray. Amen. Sunday school, church service, y'all be here. I'm committed. Uh, number two. Give generously. Give. 
Amen. Just deal gingerously. The Lord loveth a cheerful giver. Right. He loveth. Mm -hmm. Give generously. You know, people, I was thinking this morning when I was driving to church, people, people like giving generously when they go to the malls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even if it ain't on sale, but they just want it, they just want it. And so they give generously. This guy in this neighborhood, he generously give to the number man every time the number man comes. Uh, morning time and evening time. He's giving generously. Give generously. When we was in uh, when we was in uh, Greenville, South Carolina. Not Greenville, South Carolina. Greenville, Mississippi. We was in Greenville, Mississippi. <coughs> Uh, Barbara and myself, we were just walking around one day. It was a casino up, up on the hill. People couldn't hardly barely walk. Amen. But they was going to give generously <laughs> to a casino. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they was doing. Yeah. Those who can't even afford it. Mm -hmm. But that's what they was doing. And so, you know, if people can go this place, that place, you know, I see people, I see people playing a lottery. And, and you know, they, they taking 20, 30, 50 dollars out. They say they do that every day. Every day. They giving, they are committed. Yeah. They committed to give. And, and then they don't want you to ask anything for the church. Mm -hmm. They don't believe in supporting the church. Mm -hmm. Wrong attitude. But then, but, but then let there be a need. They want the church to be committed to them. That's right. right. Yeah. That's true. Amen. And then they want to get attitude. I just heard somebody say this a couple weeks ago. Oh, y'all don't want to help nobody. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing is when you come to me that way, I know how to fight a good fight of faith. Amen. And you don't want to fight with me mm. in that area. I mean, you really don't. Because I'm never going to let you condemn me. Right. Right. But I'm not helping you. Yeah. Right. Because he, uh, silver and gold have our number, such as I have. Yeah. You don't want it. You don't yeah. want it. Yeah. Exactly. Glory. Exactly. And so number three, love radically. Mm -hmm. You know, just let it be a love that's radical. You know, not just, you know, this, this like, love those who love me. I'm just going to stay in my corner. If you don't speak to me, I'm not speaking to you. Ain't nothing radical about that kind of love. All right. That's weak love. Right. Amen. Somebody, I heard about somebody in this church telling somebody, well, it's about time you speaking to me. you just weak when you tell somebody that. You don't have no radical love. Mm -hmm. That ain't no radical love. That's weak love. And especially, you've been in this church, you've been in this church, Five, ten, fifteen years, and you you waiting on somebody to speak to you. Right. <laughs> that's sad. That's mm -hmm. sad. You waiting on somebody to speak to you. Ain't no, ain't nothing radical about your kind of love. Mm -hmm. Love reached down from heaven. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. I said, love reached down from heaven. Yeah. Rescued us. Love. Love. That's what love did. That's what love did. That's what love did. And so, you know, the question is, well, what, Brother Chuck, well, what's love got to do with it? <laughs> hmm? Love got everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, love like this. Love like how Jesus loved. Right. Let everybody know, hey, you're not only a radical believer, but you are a radical lover. Amen. Yeah. You know, somebody ought to just come to church and say, I love you, man. I love you, man. <laughs> I just love you. I just love you. I just love you. Oh, I tell you that every time we leave CCA, you get in your vehicle, I say, Brother Dan, I just love you, man. Thank you for being here. I just love you, man. I love you, man. I love DW. <laughs> you the original DW. And then number four, bring others consistently. I'm committed. Anybody committed? Want to be committed? To bring others consistently. Don't just watch people go to hell. Right. 
Don't, 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 don't just watch people go to hell because of your silence. Glory. Oh, y'all missed that. Hallelujah. Because of your silence. Don't just watch people go to hell because of your silence. Too many silent Christians have sent people to hell. But bring, bring others consistently. And then number five, we've been talking about this. Volunteer joyfully. Yeah. Volunteer joyfully. Joyfully. Just, just do it with enthusiasm. Some joy, some cheerfulness, some gladness. Brighten up as you serve. I said, brighten up. Leap for joy. Turn around as you serve. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But volunteer, because y'all know this is the volunteer state. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's the volunteer state. Mm -hmm. And what are people supposed to do in the volunteer state? Volunteer. 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 So what are you supposed to do at church? Volunteer. How? Volunteer. Hallelujah. So, hey, so volunteer smile right now. <laughs> Just volunteer a smile right now. How? Cheerfully, joyfully. Because some people smile, but they don't have no joy. Amen. And then number six, share Jesus willingly. Yeah. Just share Jesus willingly. Just, I'm committed. I'm committed to share. Mm -hmm. Every day somebody needs him. You know that man in Virginia Beach? He needed the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. I don't care what he was going through. I don't care what kind of disagreement, uh, uh, gr gruntiness, grunt, uh, whatever disgruntlement was going on on the job. It was not ever worth taking. So he needed Jesus. Mm -hmm. I said he needed Jesus. If you setting yourself up to be killed by police, you need Jesus. Yeah. Hear me now before you go. Mm -hmm. Amen. Before you go. And nothing is that bad. I said nothing is that bad. Mm -hmm. It's just best to do what? Get you a fast pace out of there and never go back. Right. Just walk away. Don't even give them a two weeks notice. Right. Just walk away and never look back. Right. And forget those things which are behind. See, people don't know how to do this now. They don't know how to do it. Because too many people are going postal on jobs now. Yep. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to do it. So what's wrong with them? They don't know Jesus yeah. the right way. They don't know Jesus the right way. Amen. And so share Jesus how? Willing. 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 And cheerful. Because somebody, somebody needs him. And then number seven, fellowship purposely. Fellowship purposely. And that's just not talking about the fifth Sunday. When Ken's wife shows up on the fifth Sunday because we eat. <laughs> that's what she said. To us then. That's what she said. That's what you said. That's what you said. And thank God she comes in. But fellowship purposely is like also right after church. You ain't always the first one to leave. Right. But you fellowship and purposely with other believers of like precious faith. Amen. 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 Fellowship purposely. And, and what, what are you doing? Add value to somebody else's life on purpose. I mean, you ain't just kicking it, you know, just talking about off the wall stuff and all you know, all these crazy jokes that some people want to tell all the time. But there's a place for jokes. But then that's a place where you need to add value to a person. Amen. 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 And so if you all the time in a hurry, you ain't fellowshipping purposely. Now, I know some people have to go to work. You gotta go to work, go to work. You better go to work with a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta be in a fellowship. Fellowship in church, out of church. In church, out of church, fellowship. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, show up 
with some energy. <laughs> yeah. Show up with some energy. Whenever the praise team practice, y'all not show up talking about how tired you are. I know. I remember uh, years ago, and I'm, I'm sitting in the back, and half of everybody saying, "I'm tired. I don't feel like singing." Well, take your butt home, yo. Why are you come to practice? Come on, you don't feel like you don't feel like singing, but you up there holding the microphone. You talking about? Oh, I'm just tired. I don't feel like singing. What? What's that? Da 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 da. We ought to show how. Yes. 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 Sunday school, church service. Fellowships that we have throughout the month. You ought to show how.